Steve from Wired Up Retro. This is our premiere episode. I am here to talk a little bit about uh, video game controllers, uh, anything really to do with video games from yesteryear. I might even touch a little bit on some of the newer game systems such as Xbox One, which is um, one of the systems that I get to play and enjoy. Um, just to start out, I will tell you a little bit about myself. I'm uh, a guy who's uh, you know, a hard-working man. I work many hours a week. I don't have a lot of time to make videos. I've been kind of wanting to do this for quite some time. Um, you know, I've had a collection for many years. Uh, it started when I was a little kid, and my father bought me an Atari 2600 and got to enjoy a lot of the game system uh, of Atari. And, you know, I went over to friends' houses, houses and played in television as well as ColecoVision games as well during that time in the 1980s. And then through the 90s, um, I managed to get myself an Atari 7800 and also a, uh, an, a Nintendo Entertainment System, which I enjoyed quite a bit. And then, you know, getting into having kids, I, I kind of went away from playing video games for a few years. And uh, then kind of came back aboard and got myself a PlayStation. Ultimately, uh, you know, Dreamcast, Xbox, all those, GameCube, they entered my collection. Uh, PS2, PS3, and an Xbox 360 and an Xbox One. I still have yet to get a PS4. Maybe there'll be a good reason to get one eventually. I, I'm kind of uh, tempted to get uh, Drive Club, and I'm a racing game guy. Um, for my GameCube, I got a unique controller, which is kind of a steering controller. It's got a locking mechanism. And yeah, I've, I've always enjoyed racing games that have to do with unique controllers. Even controllers like the Nijikon are nice. This is the Game, Gamester Pro Racer for the GameCube. And they also made versions for PS1, PS2, and original Xbox. Very unique controller. I, I do like thumbsticks. I like D-pads on my video games. Um, but really, where it's really at for me, are the joystick controllers. I don't know. I, mean, I was raised on this. I got really used to holding joysticks, whether it be handheld or sitting in front of an arcade machine and just having it mounted, which obviously is the ideal, um, having a mounted joystick. But back then, you know, I, I didn't use my left hand to play with joysticks. I, I used my right hand because I'm a right-handed guy. I might bat, bat left-handed, but that that's probably because my dad's a lefty, but I, I do everything with my right hand for the most part. And, you know, the Atari 7800 came out, and its controller could be held by either the right or the left hand or by the right hand. And, of course, I always selected my right hand to play this controller, but I had a button on the left and a button on the right. And for Atari 2600 games, you could pick either button to, to do your firing. So the 7800 controller was a unique uh, controller at the time. It seemed innovative. A lot of people pan it these days because you have to hold it like this, like the claw, and get your other hand up here, and it seems a little awkward, especially compared to current day systems, which may have more of an um, even type feel to them, such as the Xbox One controller, where you're even handed, and you're doing things with both right and left hands in a more even way. So. These days, uh, yeah, people tend to look down on controllers like the 7800 controller. Anywho, my first episode will involve um, looking into a couple of different things. Firstly, I want to talk to you about an NES controller that was released in the late 80s. And a lot of people uh, didn't know that there were wireless controllers back in those days, but there were. And in fact, back as far as the 20, our Atari 2600, you could play your games with a wireless controller. But uh, Camerica, which is a company that manufactured a number of NES products, came out with this wireless stick. It's called the Freedom Stick. And it has uh, you know, the two buttons, a couple of uh, a start and select button. It's got auto fire. And it's got a switcher that changes you from player one to player two to, player, to just turning the thing off. And uh, so you can hand this over to your friend, and they can click it to player two and play. And then when it's your turn, they'll hand it back to you. So the Camera, Camerica uh, Freedom Stick came with a plug-in. Let's see if I can find here. This wireless um, plug-in 
connects to your NES. But and it's interesting, the company that made this made that detachable. And what I'm actually holding in my hands right now is not the NES connector for it, but it's the Genesis controller for it, which obviously works for other game systems like, uh, Ge uh, not just Genesis, but it works for Commodore 64, Atari 2600, VIC-20, um, a number of you know, different systems. I suppose you could probably plug it into something like ColecoVision and potentially get it to work. I haven't tried that, but maybe I will eventually. But anyways, they sold these individually so you could buy them to make it compatible with your Genesis. So it's kind of unique in that you can play Genesis or Atari, Atari 7800 games uh, or 2600 games with an NES joystick. Now, um, there's, there's new information and if you read down below um, in the title and the, the description, I'm going to provide to you uh, some info about the gentleman from Atari Age who gave me this information. Now, I think this is known by very few people, but the, the new information is that you can not only use this, but you can use a regular Nintendo controller on your Atari systems, or your Genesis, or your Commodore 64, or any of those systems that use these uh, nine pin uh, controller connectors, okay? It's like got nine pins. So, so how you do this is you buy another Camerica product. Let me get that. So this is the Camer Camerica Freedom Connection. And it, of course, came with a, a dongle that was designed, again, for use with the N Nintendo Entertainment System. So not this one, but the other one that has the Nintendo end at the end. So, uh, but again, if you take the Camerica stick receiver and plug your Genesis or your Atari adapter cables into it and then get it close enough, it's, it's definitely IR, it's, it's not that uh, uh, high speed frequency um, wireless capability, but you have to get it kind of close, like within five feet, six feet in my experience, although some have said they can get it further than that. Um, in my experience, it, it works pretty well at about five feet away, wirelessly. But anyway, so you plug your NES controller, let me grab that. Got this really well organized, don't I? All right, so you plug your NES controller into this, and it's got a belt clip. If you wear a belt or whatever, you can clip it on the side of you and then play the games wirelessly with just a regular NES controller. And I'm, I'm partial to this. I like this controller. It's got a great feel to the directional pad and the buttons. I, I've always enjoyed the NES controller. It's got those hard rectangular edges, but to me it doesn't seem to bite into my hands because I've adapted the way I hold it, so it's pretty comfortable for the most part. Um, but anyways, through this receiver, you can actually use an NES controller on your Atari 2600, or any of those other 9-pin capable systems. Alright, so a, a thought came to me, and, and that thought was, I own an Atari Flashback, which has these little 7800-like joystick controllers. They are not as big as this, this controller, but they're quite a bit smaller, a little more compact, and they have actually a 9-pin connector, just like the Atari 2600 controllers. But what I learned is that these uh, flashback controllers are, um, by the way, they're made in around 2005. Um, these, unfortunately, will not work on an Atari 2600 or 7800, Commodore 64, VIC-20, uh, ColecoVision. Doesn't do it. Mainly because of how this is built inside. It's built with a Nintendo controller chip, which basically it speaks a whole different language or it's a whole different protocol and thus the signals being sent through here are actually the same signals that you'd be getting through, let's say, an NES controller uh, plug, which looks quite a bit different from this. Now, online there's a tutorial, and again, you can check the link below, uh, and I'll provide to you the, the pinout, so you can make yourself a, uh, uh, this 9-pin adapter. I, I use a solderless connector, which basically opens up and you can actually wire in uh, the wires of your cutoff NES cord for the controller. Once it's wired in, you just click it shut, 
and of course uh, you make sure each wire goes in the proper number uh, and they're numbered one through nine. So once you've got this adapter made, which is pretty simple to make, I thought, well why not plug this, which is compatible uh, with the language the NES speaks, and plug it into my um, Chimerica adapter. And before, you know, the Freedom Connection, which has an NES um, port in it, you know, I thought, well, this should all connect together and work. And I don't want to leave you in suspense. It ends up not working. So I took this, I took this controller with its little adapter I made over to my NES, plugged it in, and lo and behold, this is working on my NES, no problem. So, you know, I'm kind of like, hey, I'm using the flashback controller, which is like an Atari you know, classic controller on my NES, but why in the world is it not plugging in and working with my Comerica Freedom Connection? So, in a future episode, we may delve into trying to figure out a way to get this working on either an Atari 2600 or an Atari 7800. Okay, now, so, something to look forward to, maybe. All right, so the other thing I want to mention here has to do with the... Um, uh, it has to do with the Freedom Connection and the uh, Seagull 78 adapter, which is made by Ed Ladin. Uh, if you plug this into your NES controller, which I've done before, I'll do again, and then you wirelessly you turn it on, and then you wirelessly connect this, um, or to this, which is now plugged into your Atari 7800, well, instead of plugging this directly into your 7800, you can take the um, adapter made by Atlatin, which I have right here, the Seagull 78. Get a little closer look at that. This adapter basically it converts a Genesis controller, which had many buttons on it, into the end, which has uh, a 7800 connection. So it converts Genesis to 7800. And since the Comerica adapter really is putting out a Genesis signal, my thought was, well, why don't we connect the Comerica receiver to this and then connect the Seagull 78 over to the Atari 7800. And maybe, just maybe, this will allow not just one button to work, but on those 7800 games that use two buttons, you could use the left and right button, just like you used on this controller back in the day. And um, fortunately, this actually does work that way. It's pretty amazing, and uh, you can use any old NES controller. Uh, there's a variety of different kinds, even joysticks that have um, you know two buttons, and you can play the 7800 games with an NES controller. Now, in the early 90s, I actually had a guy convert my NES controller to work on my Atari 7800 with both buttons, and I think it cost me around 25 or 30 dollars. And to this day, you can still find people who are making those available on eBay. And they're a little more than $25, I'll tell you that. But, uh, you know, with the Comerica, you don't have to actually go in and, and do a hack job on your NES controller. You just basically uh, are plugging things in, and it's not hacking. So it's kind of neat. In fact, that's what this channel is going to have to do with um, some of the time. I'm going to be talking about ways to not hack controllers, but ways to adapt controllers in unique ways that maybe you haven't thought about before. So, yeah. um, another thing I'll, I'll touch on here, I'm a Jaguar fan, as you can see I've got the Jaguar CD, I've got the Jaguar, and I even have a Jaguar Pro Controller with its little uh, shoulder buttons and the, the D-pad that maybe a little offer a little better accuracy than the original Jaguar uh, controller. We'll probably be doing a review on this in one of our future episodes. Um, the second major thing I did want to talk about before letting you guys go is the um, adapter made by Atari Age member Bohoki. And Bohoki makes an adapter who, which basically um, you can plug in to your um, you can plug into your Atari 5200. And by the way, the 5200 controllers, kind of like the 7800 controllers, they were pretty well not accepted by a, a good portion of gamed them back in the 80s. Although, you know, people with the system got used to having them and using them, and in some ways they have advantages because they're analog and not this digital left-right clicking thing. But, but you know, the, the fact is, after 15, 20 years, the 5200 controllers 
are notorious for starting to break down. You have to get inside them and you have to put little little silver contacts in there to make it, uh, or foil contacts to make it actually function better. And then that may work for a half a year and then you have to do it again. So a lot of people are not real excited about collecting the Atari 5200, mainly because they don't like the controllers. Um, so what Bohoki did was he followed an a, instruction on making an adapter and he made these available, available at Atari Age. And these adapters convert the uh, PC controllers of yesteryear, this would be the 1990s PC controllers, even 80s, and these have two button capability like an Atari 5200 controller would. In fact, this has more buttons on it, but they kind of do the same thing as these two. Uh, but this is a Gravis, um, a Gravis controller, and it's probably from around circa 1990. This is called the Advanced Gravis um, Joystick. All right, so basically you plug the end of this, which is a 15-pin male end, into the Bohoki uh, made adapter at Atari H, and he still makes these, and they're, they're not terribly expensive. I think they're around 11 or $12, so I think it's 12 And um, you plug that into your Atari 5200, and then you can also plug a 5200 controller right into here so that you can use the, the, uh, the phone pad or the game pad uh, with the numbers on it. You can also use the start and the reset and the pause buttons uh, on that controller since this one doesn't have those buttons. So you're basically enabling um, you know, either controller to be used, but you know, you're obviously going to want to use this uh, or something similar. And it also has a reset button right here, so you don't have to, if you don't want to plug in a 5200 controller and you just want to start the game, you press the reset on this and boom, it gets the game running. So you may not be able to select one or two player without the 5200 controller, but you can do one player games just pressing the reset. Another thing I found out that you can use with the Bohoki adapter is this EA Sports GamePad Pro, which is basically a PlayStation looking controller for PC. Again, it's got that 15, uh, 15 pin um, controller connector, and it is a digital controller, and it works uh, very well on a number of my Atari 5200 games. I have a couple other interesting uh, PC controllers that I've tried out on my 5200 and again in a future episode we'll probably touch on that a little bit. Um, so here we are and I wanted to show you the PC game port controller to 5200 adapter the one made by Bohoki at Atari Age and I've got a number of different controllers that uh, I could just show you real quick um, which ones work for what games. All right, This is the one I had shown you earlier on this is the uh, Gravis Advanced um, joystick uh, basically, this would be good for games like uh, Super Breakout, which has the analog control with the little paddle at the bottom. You move it a little bit. I mean, it just basically goes wherever the, or the paddle goes wherever you move the joystick. So this is good for those kind of games. It has the two buttons for games like Defender. Um, in fact, for the game Defender, I'm going to show you a Gravis GamePad Pro. Uh, this is the one I showed you in the video earlier. There's two versions of this. This is the original and it's just kind of more plain looking, but the EAX, EA Sports one is a bit brighter looking with the bright white. Anyway, here we go. We'll try it out, and I'll show you that the two buttons do work on this game. You've got the lasers on the left button here, and if I was actually good, you'd actually uh, see some progress here. And I'll hit the, um, there's the smart bomb, second button. Yeah. So you get the idea. It actually does work, and actually it feels pretty good um, playing the game. I, I, would like to be able to do a little better, but <laughs> another controller I'm going to show you at the moment. Let's try a different game for that one. It's another game that's going to support two button action, and that's called Moon Patrol. And I'm going to use a controller that's uh, a unique one that I had managed to come upon a while back. This is a Thrustmaster controller. And if you can see it, it basically looks a lot like a Saturn controller, the version 1 Saturn controller. So those of you who are Saturn controller fans, you can actually get a, a Saturn-like controller working on your Atari 5200 because this has the 15-pin game port connection for those PC people uh, who wanted to you know, play their fighting games, I guess. But, you know, who wants to play Moon Patrol with a Saturn controller? How about me? Let's try it out.
Oops. So you get the idea. Works pretty well. And then um, another controller that you can find that I think is pretty nice is the Gravis PC Gamepad. And, you know, it's kind of the plainer version of the uh, Gamepad Pro. But the nice thing about this Gravis PC Gamepad is the fact that it has a switch on it that allows you, if you're a, you know, if you're liking left-handed control, that's fine. But if you click the switch, it switches it so that you can now play using your right hand and as you know me I'm the right-handed guy kinda like that feature and uh, again it works with 5200 two-button games it's it's a neat controller and um, it even comes with this little stick that you can screw into place if you like using a, a small joystick so uh, and one more the Mako uh, Mako pad PC has the analog stick and also a directional pad and so you could play, let's say, Ms. Pac-Man with the directional pad mode. But if you want to use the analog stick to play, you know, something like Missile Command, you could allow, that would allow you to use the, the uh, toggle here, the analog stick. So it's a nice controller. Again, all the buttons present, and it has options here. So it makes it kind of nice. Another thing I want to mention is a new discovery, which has to do with adding a, an adapter to the... Bohoki adapter that is the PC game port to 5200 adapter. The adapter you would add to it is an adapter made by a guy on eBay who goes by the handle IconsGR74 and it's spelled I-K-O-N-S G-R 74. This is basically for people who want to use an Atari 2600 controller on their uh, PC using you know a PC game port plug-in. So let me plug this slick stick into this. And by the way, this particular adapter is not compatible with all 2600, Atari 2600 controllers. It is uh, kind of particular about which controllers it'll work with. Um, the original uh, Atari made controllers, for some reason, don't function with it. But the slick stick does. The Flashback 2 controller, which is pretty identical to the Atari 2600 controller, is compatible with this. Anyway, let me plug it in and give you a quick demo of how that works. And yeah, we'll try a we'll try a different game. We'll give you some give you some variety here. Let's try. We need a game that's got digital controls as opposed to um, analog. Centipede. We'll do that. Okay. So this is a one-button game. Uh, this adapter is only for one-button titles. Okay. Here we go. Start her up. Press the little button on the Bohoki adapter. Yeah, it works great. Of course, I'm only moving at that fast speed. If, you, if I was playing with an analog controller, I could go slow and fast, depending on how far to turn the, I turn the stick. Yeah. But as you can see, I'm getting pretty good control with the slick stick. There are a number of controllers I've tried with this adapter combo that, that works, that worked just fine, and there are a few that didn't work out too great. One, one that does work just fine with this is the Atari 7800 controller, which is interesting. Um, some of the newer made Master Play interface clones, which are uh, being made available on eBay at you know, $60 or higher, um, do not work with the 7800 controllers at all, but they'll work with Genesis controllers for two-button support and, of course, 2600 controllers of many different types for one-button games. So, anyways, um, but one neat thing about the two adapters is that these don't cost very much. You might be spending 12 on this one and maybe 13 or 14 dollars shipped for that one, so it keeps the price under 30 dollars. So, if you know price is something you want to pay attention to. This is a good way to use your Atari 2600 and 7800 controllers. All right, now on to um, just discussion of the new discovery that has to do with the Camerica products uh, plugged into an Atari 2600 or an Atari 7800. 
An Atari 2600 console plays many, many different games. And to use an NES controller using the Comerica products you, on this console is, uh, is a pretty exciting uh, endeavor. That, it's a one button console. You, know, you basically have games with just a single button press. But um, the Atari 7800, which, only, which not only plays its own games, 7800 games, but it plays the 2600 games. A lot of the 7800 only games have two button support. Um, games like um, Choplifter, which I have here, and Planet Smashers, and there's also a cute little game called Commando, one of the better Atari 7800 um, console games. So let's go ahead and switch over to the 7800. And we'll give Commando a try using the Comerica um, product. So again, you want to purchase the Freedom Stick with its connector. And I have that connector right here. And it is connected to the Aladdin Seagull 78 as mentioned in the video before. So I've got that all plugged in. I'm going to aim this toward me. And now I've got the Inten Nintendo controller connected to this wireless receiver made uh, by Comerica called the Freedom Connection. And let's go ahead and put it into player one mode, get it close enough to the receiver. By the way, I tested it here in this room. I'm getting about 10 to 12 feet of um, compatibility. It's, it's sending the signal pretty well in here. Here we go. Using an NES controller to play my 7800. And again, both buttons work. I'll show you the bombs. There's a bomb. So I can use the two buttons, which is kind of nice. Very cool. So, and there are many different N Nintendo controllers, some of which are joysticks with you know two buttons, maybe even some that look similar to this that have not just the one button, but a second button. So it would be kind of a, a neat thing to plug in one of those to play uh, 7800 or 2600 games. Let's see how far I can get. And again, I want to just offer a special thanks to Kayvon Sidhu. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Kayvon, I appreciate you doing the research to figure out that this is something that could be done. Um, quite a discovery, really. Uh, Kayvon Sidhu's um, handle at Atari Age, if you want to check him out there or send him a message, uh, is 007-826-5317. That's, that's his handle. So 007-826-5317. Uh, so anyway, thanks, and uh, definitely quite an innovative discovery here. All right, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video. I definitely am looking for new dis subscribers. Uh, with this being my first video, I would look forward to uh, meeting some of you and, and having a comment or two on the video. And definitely I'm interested in getting some thumbs ups as well. So uh, definitely spread the word and I'm looking forward to uh, putting out my second video sometime in the very near future. And there will be m more discoveries, I will just say that much. More discoveries that have to do with classic gaming and I might even throw in some uh, modern day gaming um, things as well. So we'll, we'll get into that a little later. Okay, so have a great day and we'll talk to you next time.